So my recent videos have all pretty much covered new content, upcoming content, and they've been relatively negative. So today I want to show you a great classic Ohio push that I had a little while ago. This game was a lot of fun to play and I really enjoyed the kind of old school feel of it where a cruiser goes broadside, he gets hit by a citadel. And since there's no aircraft carrier, you're gonna notice that I can use islands a lot more effectively that allow me to push up and support my team. I already noticed how aggressive my destroyers are playing and especially this small one. So we're gonna try and support him as much as possible. Of course, we're not going in right away, but we'll get into the push in a second. I'm going to be pushing into the enemy team early, right? Relatively early is even five minutes into a standard battle games. Because standard battle is a very, very passive mode. You're not really forced to push until the very late game, since the cap tick is relatively slow, and it's unlikely that anybody's gonna control the other team's cap until five minutes are left in the game, if that. So, realistically, these games tend to be snipey, campy fests, but in certain scenarios, you can end up pushing relatively successfully. And what we're gonna notice here is that my team has lost a little bit of control on the one line. Sure, we traded a DD out, but we have no vision out there and they have more DDs to replace. So they're gonna get pushed back eventually, but we have so much control in the middle of the map that I really wanna help that. And maybe we can get ourselves a bit of a crossfire going. It's a bit risky, especially since uh, we open ourselves up real heavily to uh, the six, seven, eight lines, but notice how there's really nobody there on the enemy team. They're all on the nine line. And this Thunder, of course, is moving over to support his team by these islands here. So we can actually push mid relatively safely here. And these islands are really gonna help protect us from HE spam, torpedoes, getting citadeled and smashed by all these battleships that are around. Crushing booster broadsides always feels really, really nice. And that doesn't always happen. I think <laughs> I'd give it a 50-50 a lot of the time for battleships to actually do citadel damage against some of these broadside cruisers these days. So it feels good when we get a big hit on that Salem earlier on and the Wooster later. It's quite nice and gives me a little bit of extra confidence. We've used our damage control to repair the fire. Again, I like to do that when I'm safe behind islands. I love using islands to push in. I've talked about this over and over again throughout the life of this channel. Islands are your key to pushing in. You need these little pockets of safety. They really, really help you recharge your consumables. Of course, on a battleship, your damage control is your lifeline, right? Being able to repair those fires, repair those floodings that last for a long time on your ship. And of course, as we're getting into submarines, the pings as well, right? You need that up. And having an 80 second cooldown on that is a huge, huge weakness. It is so bad to have that long of a cooldown on something that is so crucial to your survival. So we're pushing the middle of the map for the reasons we described earlier. We've been given an opportunity just based on the deployment of the enemy team and how our destroyers have been so aggressive. You do want to play around your teammates and you can generally get a feel for how people are going to play if you just pay attention to the first five or so minutes of their play, right? Where are they going? Are they pushing aggressively? Are they contesting ground? Are they playing passively? Are they angled towards the back of the map or are they angled towards the middle of the map? Those kinds of things. You can learn a lot about the teammates you have. And this small end sees me pushing, I think. I, I would like to think he saw the way I was gonna play this, pushing in, and he decided to charge in as well with me as support. You'll notice we're on the HE right now. We've got the special commander for the American tree, so that gives us a very, very fast swap time between shell types, and that allows us to absolutely crush the Shimakaze once he gets spotted by the Smallin. So that keeps a lot of HP on our Smallin to hopefully save for later. Um, of course, there is a Salem around. There are some other DDs. Fortunately, the Wooster is on the other side of the island from the Smallin, so it's possible he gets away, but Really cool to see some of that just team play develop in a random battle. We're not div mates. We didn't know each other was going to do either play before this, but really cool to see. And of course, I'm swapping back to the AP because I want to try and help keep this Salem or small end alive. 
but I don't think we're going to be quite in time for that. He's losing quite a bit of HP to this Salem. Salem, Elbing, they do pretty good damage to some destroyers. Less so the Elbing, but the Salem did a lot. But we do manage to trade out the Salem. So we went two for one with that small end. So pretty good. And now I'm in a bit of a situation <laughs> where I could be getting surrounded. But we're pushing up to the next island. And there's a little tiny cubby hole here that we can hide in for just a little bit. It's going to save us from the battleships that are both on the two line and the Thunder kind of pushing, pushing up that line as well. And the Wooster that's trying to farm us from behind these islands here. Still detected, mainly due to that Montana on the other side of the map. But we should go dark here. And that'll give us an opportunity to, again, recharge our consumables. We've used our heal. We're maybe going to use our damage control. I actually don't know what I end up doing here when I go dark. But it's an opportunity to take a small break, get the focus off of me, and let my teammates come in and support me without just dying to this... Uh, withering fire i guess we'll call it we're already up to 102,000 damage and already that was a very successful push a side of the map where our team was a little bit weaker right we had lost our one of our only dds on this flank the small end came in and helped even that up massively so now we just have a wooster to deal with over here and we don't have a lot of crossfire you notice my team has managed to take out the battleships on the other side of the map. So we don't have much crossfire to worry about, so I'm okay with just sitting here, showing my flat broadside to the entire opposite side of the map. All I need to do is focus on this rooster, right? I'm trying to take these 1v1 ones like we've talked about. We finally end up getting some vision on the Kerfirst and the Thunderer. You notice they're both running to the back of the map a little bit more. So we don't actually have to worry about their shots coming over this island nearly as much. And if we did, we're pretty angled to them already at this point. Get a nice salvo into the Wooster. Again, this was one of those games where everything seemed to kind of go just right. Most of the time, you're not going to get those devastating salvos into cruisers like I was getting this game. But when they work out, it sure does make for a fun game where you feel like you're being rewarded for pushing in. And that's what I miss. I miss that in battleships where I feel like I push in, I try and do what I can to help my team play around my teammates, and then I see the target of opportunity, the target that needs to die, which is usually a radar cruiser. Broadside, light cruiser, I shoot at it, and you get those overpens. Or splashes into the water, even worse, right? And that's just a little disappointing. But that is the way this game is designed, so we do have to deal with it. But I want to show you this game when it does work out. Those sometimes when it does work out, oh, it just makes it all worth it, right? And now at this point, we've pretty much helped our team win this game, win this flank. We got three kills. We're staying in this little cubby because they're going to want to kill me. They have to root me out somehow. But our team is coming from winning the opposite side of the flank, opposite side of the map. And we're just going to clean this one up nice and easy. Battleships pushing is a very dangerous threat. They do a lot of damage and they can make games drastically one-sided where if they are able to do enough damage. But again, that's not always guaranteed. But in the cases that it does work, you get these kind of end game situations where you do end up winning pretty close to both sides of the map at once, which feels pretty awesome to especially do in a standard battle. It's about 10 minutes, 11 minutes into the standard battle. And the game is already pretty much over. Now, I'm not one to love the fast, fast games that end in five minutes, but I also don't really enjoy the standard battles that last 15, 20 minutes either. I think this is a nice middle ground, little bit of action, not the secondary so much as the main guns doing the heavy lifting in this one for sure. And of course, it wouldn't have worked without the help of our teammates. And of course, no CV in the game. <laughs> and subs, I suppose, given those are in testing at the moment as well. Now, as for the build that I'm running on my Ohio at the moment, this is what it looks like. We're trying to get as much as we can out of our secondaries without going too overboard. It's only seven points. And then using concealment, giving us that opportunity to push in without being spotted, getting to those safety points of islands a little easier. Fire prevention, just a must on battleships. You have to take it. It is unfortunate we give up an extra heal, but a lot of the time you're not gonna make it to that fifth heal anyway. So. Not a huge thing to give up. And I am running double AA here. It can help. Ohio AA is pretty good already. And if you're supported by a couple teammates, CVs really won't want to go after you, which feels really, really nice, especially for a ship that wants to push in. 
And of course, Gun Feeder. This is such a nice upgrade for something like Halsey or the other special American commanders. It's really, really useful on basically every ship in the game. Swapping between AP and HE is basically a must these days, given the way the meta has changed and how strong HE is for the vast majority of situations where people are angled. And here are the upgrades. I think that's pretty standard, pretty normal. You could consider running a damage control party mod 1 if you wanted to extend this to around 30 seconds, 28 seconds or so, which is pretty good. But uh, remember, of course, that means it's a longer time between getting it back off cooldown again, right? So you get a longer immunity period, but the next time you can use that and get that instantaneous get rid of all the fires and problems on my ship is a little bit longer, a little bit further away. So not always the best upgrade to use, but can be good if you're using it correctly. Ohio, still one of the best battleships in the game. And if you're going for research points as far as the ships that are in there, I think Ohio has to be my recommendation still. It is just the best ship and probably one of the more fun ships you can get out of the research bureau. Unfortunately, it takes a long time to get there. This is an end game, late game player ship, right? So that's a little unfortunate, but at least it's a worthy goal to work towards. But uh, that's gonna be it. I really appreciate you guys watching this one uh, about the Ohio. Good old fashioned push in this ship, feels good. Need to be adding a few more of those games into the channel, I think, where it's just a fun match that I had. Not talking about game balance, not talking about the direction of the game or problems with wargaming, just some good gameplay and some fun little pointers that you can use in your game. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you, and have a great day.